But I'd quickly like to say that this video is not going to be me saying that one city is better or worse. They're both fantastic places to live. I will share the similarities and differences between Tampa and Orlando, as well as a high level overview of everything from real estate and homes, economies and lifestyle, as well as geography and population. That way we have a good understanding of the location and size of Tampa and Orlando. You ready? Let's go. This is the city of Tampa. This entire area is the greater Tampa Bay Metro which consists of multiple different cities and municipalities across three counties, including Hillsborough, Pinellas, and Pasco County. 90 miles away toward the center of Florida is the city of Orlando. The greater Orlando Metro looks like this, which also consists of multiple different cities and municipalities across four counties, including Orange, Seminole, Osceola, and Lake County. It's common that the greater metros of Tampa and Orlando are simply referenced as Orlando and Tampa, even though that's not technically accurate. This is especially true when speaking to someone not from the area. The greater metros of Tampa and Orlando may also be called Greater Tampa Bay or simply Tampa Bay and Greater Central Florida or Greater Orlando. These titles are often used interchangeably. Tampa and Orlando are two of the largest metros in Florida behind Miami. There is a similar size population in each city. As of the last census, there's about 3.1 million people in the greater Tampa Bay area and about 2.7 million in the greater Orlando area. Both of Tampa and Orlando's economies are largely driven by the tourism industry, but more so in Orlando with Disney World bringing in roughly 75 billion in annual revenue. Tourism accounts for about 40% of the workforce in Orlando. Other industries that drive Orlando's economy include hospitality, travel, aerospace, healthcare, research, and tech. Tampa's economy is also driven from healthcare, tech, and has footprints in other industries such as finance, fintech, agriculture, construction, and even government. The MacDill Air Force Base is actually located right in South Tampa. There are even quite a few publicly traded companies headquartered in Orlando and Tampa as seen here. Let's talk about the growth and potential growth in each city. It's no secret that Tampa and Orlando have been regularly making tops of lists for best places to invest or live or hottest markets and on and on. So let's look at what's been happening in the growth of residential and infrastructure between the two cities. The port cities around Tampa Bay and near downtown Orlando were established long ago, over the last century. In these areas, you can find a mixture of older, possibly historic homes, renovated existing homes, and homes being replaced with custom or semi-custom new construction. As you move away from these well-established areas, the majority of homes become newer and newer. It is at the perimeters of these established cities where you'll find what has been largely rural, agricultural, or farmland. This ag land has been rapidly rezoned and replaced with master plan new construction residential subdivisions, often with hundreds of home sites in each. What is different between Tampa and Orlando is there seems to be less of these new development sites available in Tampa and more opportunity land around Central Florida. So while Tampa does get new communities, Orlando is getting what is not just new subdivisions, but entire new towns complete with their own main streets filled with retail and restaurants. Lake Nona, Horizons West, Sunbridge, and Neo City are some of the examples of the new or newer towns at the perimeters of Central Florida. Tampa has done some really cool things that Orlando hasn't done yet. The luxury condos in Tampa Bay area have multiplied since 2015. The downtown Water Street project has literally transformed the skyline of downtown Tampa with even more new condos along the iconic Bayshore Boulevard and in downtown St. Petersburg. Differently from Orlando, Tampa has done an excellent job building or renovating destination outdoor entertainment venues such as Armature Works, Sparkman's Wharf, and the St. Pete Pier. Now let's explore the lifestyles beyond just going out to eat or having coffee such as recreation, sports, things to do, and the beach, which is where we'll start. What may seem as an obvious difference between the cities is that Tampa is closer in proximity to the beach. If you're thinking of moving to Tampa to be close to the beach, then it might not be what you think. This is where the beaches are located, which is technically St. Pete Beach and Clearwater Beach. The areas along the bay are not really beachfront and might not even be something you want to swim in. 
So if you want to live close to these beaches, then you'll need to live here. And as you go farther out, the drive time increases. Here is a rough drive time map, as you see. It might be 45 minutes to an hour's drive to get to the beach, depending on where you are in Tampa. Comparatively, you can also get to the beach in about 40 minutes to an hour's drive from Orlando, but this would be to the east coast at either New Smyrna or Cocoa Beach. These beaches are a bit more laid back compared to St. Pete and Clearwater Beach. When it comes to professional sports, Tampa is a powerhouse. Other than recent Stanley Cup champions, the Lightning and Super Bowl champs, the Buccaneers, you can also find the Tampa Bay Rays, Rowdy Soccer, the New York Yankees have a practice stadium, and University of South Florida or USF has the largest college sports program in Tampa. Much different from Tampa, Orlando has professional basketball, the Magic, as well as Major League Soccer with Orlando Pride and Orlando City Soccer. The Solar Bears are in Orlando and they're actually a feeder team to the Bolts. And University of Central Florida is the largest college for sports in the Orlando area. Orlando has countless reputable golf courses and resorts with golf courses. Tampa also has many different courses, but it is not as much of a destination for golf as Orlando, although Palm Harbor does have that reputable Innisbrook resort. If you enjoy tennis, then both Tampa and Orlando are great for tennis year-round. Each have multiple racket clubs, country clubs, and public courts. The area known as Lake Nona in Orlando is now the headquarters for USTA. The Tampa Bay area has the Innisbrook Tennis Club. If you like cycling, then Orlando and Tampa have a handful of decent cycling trails. Hopefully sooner than later, there will actually be a link of trails totaling 250 miles that will connect downtown St. Pete all the way across to the Space Coast by bike. In fact, there are only a few gaps left to fill near the center of the state. It's at these same venues where the pro sports teams play, where you'll also be able to see major concerts and shows. There are also more intimate performing arts theaters in the downtown areas, both Tampa and Orlando. You'll find nice farmer markets, art festivals, and holiday events in the downtowns of each of the cities around the major metros of Tampa and Orlando. There's also more intimate theaters like the Dr. Phillips Art Center in downtown Orlando, or the Strad Center in downtown Tampa. I mentioned earlier that Disney World is a huge economic driver to Orlando in the state of Florida. However, Orlando and Tampa have a lot of other theme parks as well. There's SeaWorld and Universal Studios in Orlando. There's also many water parks such as Volcano Bay and Disney's Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach. Closer to Tampa, you'll find Busch Gardens and the Adventure Bay Water Park. And if that isn't enough, then in between Tampa and Orlando is a city called Lakeland, where you can find Legoland, which also has its own water park and the new Peppa Pig theme park. If you're someone that's only ever visited Central Florida for the theme parks, then it's likely you may have a perception that Orlando is basically theme parks and tourism, but it's certainly not what it's like when you live here, which I'll explain in a moment. If fishing is your favorite hobby or pastime, then there are no shortage of lakes or access to open ocean. Even if you're living more inland, it's not ever too far of a drive to get to a boat launch. Orlando is known to have a significant amount of outlet mall options, but there's also the Mall of Millennia for your higher end shopping. Disney Springs is also fantastic for shopping and dining. Tampa Bay has the International Mall, which is great for higher end shopping, but doesn't have too many options for outlet malls. If you like smaller boutique shopping areas, then you'll love the Hyde Park Village in South Tampa. Park Avenue in Winter Park. Let's start looking at the homes. The home prices are fairly similar between Tampa and Orlando. If looking at data for all property types, sale price averages are usually slightly higher in Tampa compared to Orlando. If you only look at single family home sale data, then the sale price averages are very comparable in Tampa and Orlando, with sometimes even higher sale prices in the Orlando metro. Remember that real estate is always hyper local, 
so averages can only mean so much. It's important to know that there are many different areas to find affordable homes, mid-range homes, and higher-end luxury homes in both cities. You'll notice that there are more areas that demand higher prices in Orlando versus Tampa. Something similar is that these luxury home areas are often near or on the water, such as along the coast or on the lake like right here in Winter Park. There are also many more lakes in Orlando, and they're often larger compared to that of the Tampa Bay lakes. Many of the lakes in Orlando are also boat and water sport friendly. A significant driver for people who want the waterfront lifestyle in Tampa is open water access from their own property. This means you can basically take your boat right out to the ocean from your backyard. This is not an option in Orlando. However, 45 minutes east, there are communities along the New Smyrna and Space Coast where you can find homes with open water access. Most of the cities and towns of the Orlando and Tampa metros are primarily residential areas or where people live full time. If you've only ever visited Orlando for theme parks or Clearwater Beach for vacation, that might be hard to imagine. But remember, these are some of the biggest cities in Florida. There are areas of each city that do have a higher density of vacation homeowners and you want to know that so you know where to look if you're considering a move here. If you're looking to live full time, build a community, maybe send kids to school, you probably want to stay in a primary residential area. Or if you're trying to find a second home, vacation home, or find an investment property, you may want to find something that's zoned for short term rentals or offers amenities suitable for that Florida vacation life like at the beaches or near Disney World. Here is where you'll find a higher density of short-term rental friendly areas in Orlando. This area is situated just south and west of Disney. Pretty much every other part of Orlando is mostly primary residences. In Tampa, along the beaches from St. Pete Beach up to Clearwater Beach, you'll also find a higher density of short-term rentals. The rest of Tampa Bay will be mostly primary residential areas. Let's talk about driving through Tampa and Orlando and the traffic. If you talk to someone from Tampa, they're going to tell you Tampa traffic is worse. And if you speak to someone from Orlando, they're going to tell you that Orlando traffic is the worst. Just remember, it's common to have traffic near downtown, but in Orlando, you'll also get traffic around Disney World and there seems to be no timing for it. It's important to remember that traffic in Orlando and Tampa is nowhere near as bad as places like Miami, New York City, or Los Angeles. So if you compare to that, the traffic really isn't that bad in either Tampa or Orlando. If you fly often, then both Tampa and Orlando have international airports and smaller executive airports. Orlando International Airport will have a lot more flight options compared to Tampa International. However, the Tampa airport seems to be faster to get through. So now that you have all of this insight on Tampa and Orlando, I'd love to know which city you're gravitating toward. Let me know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe and check out my other more in-depth videos on Tampa and Orlando. And if you found this insightful, please give a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithm and it keeps me motivated to continue making these. Most importantly, if you'd like assistance navigating the real estate market here, myself and team would be honored to assist you. If we don't cover the exact area you'd like to be in, then our brokerage Compass covers the entire state of Florida and we're actually the biggest broker in the state and the US. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you all in the Sunshine State soon enough.